Well, good afternoon, folks. Uh, welcome to uh, another of the multi hold Solutions webinar series. My name is Greg Bolo. I'm joining you as we do, uh, have done now regularly since uh, early in 2020. And today we're very pleased to be able to be doing a walkthrough of what is called the MY5. The actual vessel we're going to be walking through today is the MY40, and I'll explain shortly what that's all about. But as we do each week, we'll just wait a few minutes until all of the uh, registered participants have uh, joined into today's presentation. Um, as you can see there, that's the, uh, the fantastic motor yacht from the Fontaine Mijo range there on the screen. Has uh, proven to be a real game changer in the uh, in the power catamaran and, and even the, the, the power boat industry. And we're so pleased that here in Australia and New Zealand and around Asia, we've now got a, uh, a good number of these boats arriving into our market uh, with some very happy owners all around. And as we do each week, we would always just like to thank the owners of the vessel today who are allowing us to use their boat to uh, do this walkthrough. They're always appreciated. We're working with uh, Marcus and Rachel today. I can see Rachel there on screen. And, uh, and we're, um, we're working with Marcus Overman and Rachel who are at the, um, uh, the Boatworks uh, Marine Facility on the Gold Coast where this uh, is currently birthed. And um, it's a, a slightly inclement day there today on the Gold Coast. We have had some showers. We were almost close to contemplating uh, cancelling today's um, webinar because we didn't want to be doing it in the pouring rain. But luckily the weather has uh, cleared and we're going to be able to proceed as planned. Um, now, if I just click through to the next slide, just keeping everyone updated on the upcoming webinars that we have uh, planned. Yes. I can hear you there, Marcus and Rach. So um, we've got the uh, live webinar on the Lycian coast of Turkey. That's uh, on the 25th of March. That'll be a fantastic webinar with our partners from Mariner Boating. And then on the 29th of April, we're going to be doing New Caledonia uh, as a destination with uh, John and the crew from the Town Under Rally. Uh, so that will be also very good. The most recent uh, walkthrough we did was a couple of weeks ago. We, uh, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we did the Allegria 67. That was uh, fantastic. And all of our webinars are now live on YouTube, on the YouTube channel. And it's been very encouraging to see the number of uh, views, uh, the number of people who are coming on and watching those webinars to get uh, the information they need. Not only do we have uh, the webinars up on our YouTube channel, we also have uh, some other good series that you can watch things like those uh, that uh, we've got a full uh, range of videos about how our factory pickup works in france for those people who are planning on not buying a boat and picking it up from the factory in france and we also have uh, a good series of videos there which uh, are about the elba 45 gordon and louise's great adventure when they uh, cruised across from the factory and there's many many other videos on our youtube channel so we encourage you to uh, jump on there and have a look now, uh, as we do each week, we welcome any questions from uh, our participants. The way to do that is through the Q&A button. And if you just click on the Q&A button and leave or type your uh, question, we will then either answer it as we're going, if it's relevant to the area of the boat that Marcus is discussing, or we'll leave it to a short question and answer session at the end of the presentation. We don't expect today's webinar to be a long one. We have had some uh, record breakers over the past. Uh, I would be surprised if we're not through uh, this walkthrough today in 45 minutes to one hour, but uh, that, that should be the case. So we hopefully won't keep you for too long, but we don't mind going longer. So if you've got questions or if you wanna see a part of the boat again, because you, you'd like to focus in on something, just pop the question into the Q&A box and we'll come back and discuss it. Uh, as said, my name is Greg Bolla. Uh, I've been doing all of the hosting the webinars since the beginning last year. And Rachel in the background, who is uh, organizing and managing the setup of these webinars. Today, we're using a new uh, camera holding device. So hopefully it should be a very steady viewing. 
And we've also got Marcus with his ear pods in today. So uh, we should be able to hear Marcus, even if he's a fair way away from us. So that's all very useful. We're getting, we're getting better at these. Um, so Marcus, who is Marcus? Uh, he's been in the multi-hole industry for over 23 years. Uh, lived in Thailand for many years where he started out running his own company and then he was a yacht broker for more than 15 years specialising in power models, selling hundreds of vessels from, from Riviera, Ferretti, Pershing and Riva and so on. Uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing Marcus for all those years and he is a very experienced power boat person. And he's now our multi-hull solutions power, or should I say motor yacht expert and he's based there on the Gold Coast at the Sales Centre at Boatworks. And while we're talking about that, for anyone that's in the uh, Southeast Queensland region, you'd be uh, also pleased to know that we've just recently opened a new office, which is now located in Manly, just near the, uh, the Marina Precinct there in Brisbane. Uh, so now we are well covered. We've got um, Malula Bar up on the Sunshine Coast. We've got Manly in Brisbane and the Boatworks on the Gold Coast. So we've certainly got some great coverage in Southeast Queensland. Okay, so there in front of us is the MY5. Uh, to explain, the factory made a decision of about two months ago that they are rebranding the uh, motor yacht range uh, to be more reflective of the fact that, for instance, an MY40 is a 40 foot power, uh, motor yacht. But in reality, the MY40 power catamaran has the, the space and the volume of a 50 foot monohull. And what they were finding is that people were obtaining pricing and doing their comparable notes and were going, oh, okay, well, you've got this 40 foot monohull versus, uh, sorry, 40 foot power catamaran versus a 40 foot monohull. How come the power cat is so much more expensive? And it's not that much more expensive. That's also an anomaly in itself. but it became quite apparent that we needed to move away from using the feet uh, uh, as in the, the length measurement to signify these boats and just give them a name. So we've now got the MY4S, which has replaced the MY37. The MY4S is a uh, non-flybridge version. It's a sedan version. That's what the S stands for. And then the MY40 has now been renamed the MY5 to reflect the fact that at the end of the day, it lines up quite clearly in terms of volume, space, uh, and performance against a 50 foot monohull. And then the MY44 has been called the MY6 because it too has the space and volume that you would find on a 60 foot monohull. So it's a logical change. And the other thing they've done, so they haven't changed the layout, they haven't changed the, um, the, the design or the um, interior fit out, sorry, yeah, the interior layouts of the MY five, which used to be the MI40, or the MI6, which was the MI44. But what they have done, and we'll show you later in this presentation, they have announced a new, what the French call millicene, which is effectively the interior colour swatch or the interior colouring. So we'll show you that when we get inside during the walkthrough. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the share screen and I'm going to stop my video. And we're going to go full screen with Marcus, who is on the back of the MY5 Marley. So welcome, Marcus. Hi, Greg. Thanks, everyone, for uh, joining in this walkthrough of the MY5. It's a great little uh, family boat. Well, I say little. It's uh, little in length, but it packs a, a real punch. It's a great, um, great, great boat for a couple. Very easy to handle with the IPS. Um, joystick drives, has three cabins with a huge muster, um, all the luxuries and mod cons you'd expect of, uh, from Fontaine Peugeot. And um, I look forward to showing you some of the features. So straight off the bat, um, while we're at the back of the boat here, you can see one of the highlights, I think, of the boat is this um, full beam hydraulic platform which obviously holds the tender. So it's easy uh, launching and retrieving of the tender. Um, you can have whatever length tender you like, um, as long as it's within the weight capacity, which is 250 kilograms. So if I just demonstrate, if I can turn it on. Yeah. 
So you can see, I won't put it all the way down, but you can see as it goes down, these um, steps appear, like boarding steps that are attached to the transom of the boat. So um, you can have this platform, you know, slightly submerged or fully submerged. It goes two feet into the water. Um, and it becomes, when you're at anchor and the tender's off, it just becomes a great um, swimming platform, you know, or if you're diving, you can put it down in the water with your tanks and swim off and then come back on with your tanks and then be raised up to to the um, to the deck level. So it really is a, a unique feature. And I think it's the only full beam platform available in this class of boat, uh, in this size of boat in the uh, power catamaran range. You have the swim ladder here with um, railings to help pull yourself up. And note there's dual access. So we're about to enter here on the starboard side, which has a, a narrow two accesses. So the main access is uh, on the port side, which is a quite a big, big uh, space. So on the port side here, you have the pull out shower, transom shower, hot and cold, fresh water, of course. But just to clarify, Marcus, so that entrance way there is slightly narrower than the one on the port side, yeah? Yeah, so when we come through the cockpit, you'll have a better view, view of that. So on this side, you've got a good meter clearance in and out. So this becomes, when you're on the boat at anchor, this probably would become your main um, entrance to the platform and, and back on, or to the tender and then back into the cockpit. So the cockpit is quite unique in, it, in a lot of ways. Um, having a nice L-shaped sofa is rarely seen on, um, on um, boats of this size. So it's a quite a, a nice little feature. There's great storage all the way along. You've got full, full shelter from the elements. Um, the lighting here, courtesy lighting underneath, and then storage under so there's two access lockers, but you've got storage all the way along. So it's great for toolboxes and um, hoses and things like that. Um, your two main engine hatches. So you've got great access to on top of the IPS uh, engines. And I think maybe later we'll circle back and go in the engine room. Um, in the center here is a place dedicated really for a life raft if one was on board. But also forward of that, you've got the gas locker. So um, gas is a choice on the spec list. You can, it, the boat comes up um, standard with two gas burners, but if you wish not to have, you can have induction. And then, so this um, gas locker just becomes extra storage. And uh, while I'm in here, actually, this is also where you fill fill both fuel tanks, so just here, which is a, a great little design because if, you know, it, sometimes if you spill a little bit of diesel, you're not getting it any, you're not getting it on the teak at all. It'll just flow through into the, and you can wash it out. Um, it also is also nice having them close together. So as a catamaran is so wide, sometimes you pull up to the fuel wall and the hose won't reach to the other side and you have to turn the boat around. So that's not the case with the, with this boat. So they're nice, nice and central. Um, spiral staircase, which is nice, not often seen on many other boats again, but it just gives you um, a nice entrance, nice wide um, steps up into, up into the flybridge, which we'll head up to and in just a sec. Just to clarify while you're there, Marcus, my understanding is they're both 700 litre tanks, is that right? Yeah, so 1400 in total. Yeah. And yeah. Do, do, should we have the discussion now about fuel ranges or we can have that when we're up at the uh, helm station? Yeah, we can, um, well, it, the boat does a top speed of 24 knots. I should mention that this has the uh, upgraded engines, the IPS 500 which is 380 horsepower. So standard, the base boat comes with the IPS 400, which is the uh, 300 horsepower. So with this engine package, and this is by far the most popular selection for most clients, 
is um, top speed of 24 knots, cruising at about 19, 20 knots, and then displacement speed of about eight knots. So your range will, will depend obviously the speed you're doing, but at, um, at cruising speed, let's say 20 knots, you're using it about five liters per nautical mile in total. So that's it, both engines and one generator running. Very okay. Good. Um, on this particular boat, we've got these mooring capstans. Um, not, I wouldn't call it an essential, but more of a luxury. So these are controlled by the push button here, um, just to help you know pull the boat in alongside in, in windy situations. Um, short power lead, obviously. Um, the I was I showed you before I was operating the platform with a remote control, but there's also a um, a main switch panel there. So moving up onto the foredeck, you've got these nice wide side decks, which are 600 mil wide. So there's plenty of room to safely get around the boat. You've got um, safety railing here, our board, and also here on the coach house, which is, which is um, very reassuring. You certainly have had some rain there today, haven't you? That water is a lovely brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this four deck area actually really beca it becomes a, a place on the boat that you really do tend to spend a bit of time. It's nice and safe here with the hard railings all the way around. I think there's about 12 square meters of space here. These, this U-shaped sunbed is really quite cool with the uh, reclining backrests and um and under here you've got like a toy locker so all your well toys and whatever else you want to put in there there's fenders lines you know your anchor well is in here and your anchor um, uh, electric anchor windlass is controlled from your flybridge helm and your lower helm but also inside the locker here so there's a third control Just there. So you've got three uh, three areas of operation. And when you anchor, when you anchor the MY40, do you fit a snubber? You do. This uh, it's a good point. This boat doesn't have one fitted yet, and you can see these strong points here. So we fitted them locally um, here, and then uh, the owner is currently getting a, a rope made up, which will which will go down and hook onto the chain once it's out and the anchor's down. And then that will be, that will, um, yeah, so, so that would be kept here probably and then hooked onto the chain once you've got the anchor down and then it will go out and take all the load off the anchor. Understood. So in the locker here, if you uh, can see, I'll jump down in here, but it's just really quite deep. Easy to get in and out with these steps. And then you've got great access to your anchor chain here. And then you've got this whole, this huge area. Current owner's got one of those lily pads. So they're great for the kids. You lay them out behind the swim platform when you're at anchor and the kids can run up and down. And then further down in here, you've got access to your water tank and also your black water tank. So great for any maintenance that needs to be doing, need, needs doing. And beside your right hand shoulder there, what are those two caps? Those two are uh, now up here. Um, here? Yeah. Okay, so that's a saltwater deck wash and a freshwater deck wash. Oh, very good. And there'll okay. be an adapter that we uh, clip onto a, a regular hose and then, uh, you know, a gun on the end and then clean the anchor coming up when, when the chain's coming up. That's an option, but it's a very inexpensive one and one that's worth uh, selecting for sure. So on that basis, the fact you've got a fresh water, this boat's fitted with a, uh, a, um, a um, water maker. Yeah, water maker, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so this boat 
as a 12 volt 60 liter an hour water maker. Okay. So, which is handy. You don't need to run the generator to use it. So you can have it um, just making water whenever you need. You don't, it's a very, it doesn't draw too much power off the batteries. So if you're running from A to B, you can just have the engine when you've got the engine on and the alternator is charging the batteries. It's a great time to run your water maker and just make sure everything's topped up. And it gives you constant tanks filled with constant drinking water. So instead of filling up from the arena side here, uh, you can just use water maker water, which is super clean and um, you know uh, tappable, pot uh, potable. Sorry. So um, you've got this extended brow here. It's just very typical of most Montana Peugeots, but that gives a nice, so cool, keeps the boat nice and cool, and adds to the sleek exterior of this boat, which is really quite. Quite cool. Okay, so moving back down and we'll shoot up to the flybridge. Very good. There's no doubt that this is, there's an immense amount of volume for a 40 foot uh, powerboat. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So this is um, like a 16 square meter space up here. Well, you've got the helm station with two bucket seats, which are optional, it comes standard with one. You've got a nice day bed to the left of that, which has a nice little uh, convertible system to make them into um, uh, little seats, which I'll show you in a second. A little wet bar with a sink, fridge, and an optional ice maker or storage locker underneath, rubbish bin. And then you've got the dining area here. So you've got a really uh, practical use of space here. This particular boat's just had the clears added. And obviously, not to mention, it's got uh, the hard top, which is optional. So you can, you can order the soft bimini which is also very nice It's stainless. It's the same style, has this FP badging, um, but, it's, uh, but it's with a, a umbrella cloth rather than this. We've just lost Rachel's uh, camera there for a minute, uh, Marcus. I'll just get you to hold for one second. Something's uh, just happened. So we'll just hold fire until we get the picture back. There we go. We're back. Thank you. Can you see? We're back. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, while I'm on the hard top, you have this. Uh, you have, have lighting. Um, four four lighting. Four um, LED lights here. And then, then this is an opening sunroof. So the forward section of the hard top uh, becomes opening, uh, like a convertible, you might say. Uh, this is uh, generally during the day, it would feel, I would imagine it would be closed, but you know, at night time when you're sitting up here um, doing some stargazing, this is a great place you can open up, uh, open up the sunroof. And there was another little feature just before you walk away from it in the, uh, in the table there, the, the pop-ups. Ah, yes. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. So these, when you're having dinner up here at night, we've got these little lights, which is Cool. Again, a cool little feature, and um, these are these are standard inclusions. There's speakers, speakers around here. So the boat has a fusion stereo system, so you just Bluetooth your phone to it, and then you can select music, volume, um, select zone, so you can have all the music up on the fly, or all the, mu the music only in the saloon or cockpit, as you wish. So it's um, again a very cool feature. On the, on the day bed, as I mentioned before, these backrests, these can change into little backrests, which is a nice place to accompany the, the helms and when you're driving along and you get nice breeze, good view. So it's um, multifunctional. And then the helm station here, 
you can see you've got very good visibility. You can see easily both bows. And then, Rachel, if you point back through the flybridge hatch, you can see the, the port corner of the boat very clearly. All these things are very important when you know operating and berthing the boat. And then if you just look out the side here, right, you can see the the other corner of the boat. I've had the pleasure of parking one of the uh, MY5s, Marcus, with that IPS, and you are 100% correct. There is visibility all around. Yeah, so when parking practically, you just stand here. You've got your, you don't need to reach for the throttle controls because it's all controlled by the joystick here. So you've got, you can see all four corners of the boat. And it really is, uh, doesn't get much easier. Some boats from this size, you might look at getting a remote controller, but no need, no need with this boat. So you've got um, optional Garmin electronics. And then the Volvo display here, um, Volvo displays here, and then that's the Garmin autopilot there. So a very basic layout, but everything do you need. Up here, you've just got the light switch. I think. And is that twin helm seat uh, an option or a standard? That's an option. So it comes it comes standard with the single single bucket seat. Now we might quickly oh before we leave the flybridge. And there's no so, shortage of drink holders, is there? No, <laughs> plenty. So on this back back aft section, aft deck of the flybridge, if you were to choose the solar panel option, there'd be three, well, I think 100 watt or 120 watt solar panels. And then, and then, because you're on a, a yacht where the owner has chosen the hard top option, you'd also be able to add more solar up there, correct? Yeah, of course. And in fact, the reason that they put this solar, they factory fit the solar down here, is for people. Some people don't choose the hard top; they choose the bimini, or they don't. In Europe, they might not have a covering at all. So this is where the obvious place that um, it, it fits all, 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 all boats. Uh, depending on uh, uh, what option you have, hard job, but many or or without. Very good. So I will quickly jump down into the engine room. And so while we're there, so Rachel, I think we've got the sink there, and then there's also an option to have a, a fridge up there. There, there is a fridge there, and you'll see the locker underneath or adjacent to the fridge. That's where we could put an ice maker. And where would you put the barbecue on this boat? Um, good question. In we find in the Mediterranean, the clients have it up there and on the flybridge in the wet bar. But a lot of the clients here in Australia, they choose to buy their own barbecue, and that we can mount on the railing here, outboard. Maybe it's a small gas one, portable one with their own gas bottle that we where we uh, have a bracket that we we fit underneath. That way you can take it to the beach and use it there or and then it's nice and close to the galley so it, so there's both options in answer to your question yeah and i think increasingly we have clients who just say look as long as i've got a gas bottle they they do the uh weber that they can pull out use and then put yeah back into a locker yeah exactly so there's loads of space in these engine rooms uh, where you can store a barbecue and um, yes. a small gas bottle like that. So you can see there's quite a lot of space, even with the larger engines. Well, in fact, um, the engines are exactly this physical same size, the standard and the optional. Um, but there's great room to move around, service the boat. One of the advantages, the obvious advantage with IPS is the maneuverability and the a little bit more fuel efficient than shaft drives, but it also means that the engine can be designed to be fitted further back in the boat. And what that does is that gives us more, or the design is more room for accommodation space. So having the engines um, back where they are um, really benefits the boat. So on this port side, we have the um, eight kilowatt 
Fisher Panda generator, which is the factory fitted option. Uh, three kilowatt inverter, and then that's a separate inverter for the fridge. You've got 600 amp of um, gel batteries. And then this kind of storage here, you could easily fit a barbecue or something yes. similar in there. On the other side, in fact, there's a little bit more space. On the other side on this boat is obviously no generator, but we have the water maker. And I know on the sailing cats, we fit the yachts now, or mostly it's an option, but just about everyone ticks it. We have the double water pumps as in the redundancy of two water pumps. You've got the same? Yeah, we do. The, we have that. That That is an option. But again, as you said, it's a sensible one. There's also a fuel transfer pump if you wish to um, move the fuel from one side to the other. So the generator um, feeds off the port side tank here, but the generator uses so little. Um, you, you know, it's hardly noticeable, but it's nice to have that fuel transfer pump. Let's say you were in a, in a place where you could only fill up one side because the hose won't reach, you can then transfer the fuel over. Um, they have dual Raycor filters as standard, um, which is a nice, if you look closely at a lot of specs of other boats, they won't have, you know, little features like that. Um, the deck cockpit here is fitted with the, the synthetic flexi teak, which is a personal choice. You can have real teak, this flexi teak, or it just comes with the non-skid, which would be the same you see here on the side decks. So before we move inside, you'll notice uh, you've got huge, huge opening space. So the, these are four panel doors that slide all the way over. So you've got three quarter opening which makes for a nice little um, serving area at, with the aft galley here. So what I might do now is if Rachel just steps in there and just gives us a bit of a look at that galley and then I'll bring up on the screen the, the, the new, the new colour uh, thing. But as you, can see, you can see there that this is the, the, the timber with the, would we call that a grey bench top? And yep. what I'm going to do now is do a share screen and I'll just show the um, uh, the other, the, the, the new Millicene. So I'll just go from current slide. So that's the new look there. So we're going to a more of a, I suppose you call it ash and a slightly darker bench top still with the white cupboards and a slightly different cushion color and down, down in the cabins, the same, the same color scheme. So if uh, we can bring that back up again, if we want during the discussion, but just so you know, that's, the, that's what's now the 2021 color scheme for the MY5. So I'm just gonna stop the share again and bring it back to you. Okay, here we go. So yeah, you'll have a darker floor, I believe, um, a gray timber and then a, um, was it a, was a, what was the countertop? I can't remember. <laughs> it was a darker color. Yes. It was a darker color. And then yeah. uh, the upholstery is more of a beige. Yes. So, so regards to the galley here, you've got um, great storage lockers here, for glassware, crockery. If you were to choose a microwave, um, the microwave would take up a section in this, in this, um, in this locker here. Um, this is a gas barbecue, but you can also have a conventional oven and microwave. So that's quite a sensible option. This is the standard um, um, stove top, but as I mentioned before, you can choose to have induction. You've got a exhaust rain it underneath, um, double sinks and uh, option for a dishwasher. So there's a small small dishwasher, perfect size for, uh, you know, see this three cabin boat. Again, you will not, don't have any problems with water because you've got the water maker. 
large, huge drawer here. More storage under the sink, rubbish bin, and more storage there. And then this one is really quite big, so it goes all the way back to there. Um, under the floors, they've cleverly um, have no hinges or um, latches on them to keep it a nice sleek design. But they're easily opened up and these with, you know, as shown here as with a nice plastic box, you can store lots of, you know, non-perishable items, bottles of water, that kind of thing under the, all the way along through the saloon. This it's is a, a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of boat for 40 foot, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, and there's a huge amount of storage. So it's a really livable boat. You, you could live on here as a couple quite easily. There's a lot of space to put things and hide things and, um, you know, because you do accumulate stuff when living on board. This is like a half locker. And then underneath, you'll notice when we go down into the master cabin, under these, you'll use the headroom created in the lower cabin. So as I step up to the forward section of the saloon, the headroom raises up and it gives you, what it does, it gives you fantastic uh, views out the window. So being this high up off the, off the um, from the cockpit floor, gives you fantastic views out the, all the saloon windows. Notice the two opening side windows for a good cross breeze. And of course, great for communication. So if you're driving and you need to talk to somebody who's out on the foredeck, uh, it makes it a lot easier. And fridges? Fridges, just behind you right here is a optional fridge freezer. So standard comes a smaller one, but this is the, for a small fee, you, it's very sensible to get the bigger fridge. So the fridge, in total fridges, you've got the fridge freezer here, and then you've got the fridge up on the, up on the fly ridge, the drinks fridge on the fly ridge. So the, this coffee table here in the saloon um, is electric and raises up to become a dining table quite cleverly. Yes, I like the demonstration you do of this table. So it's a cute, it's a really clever little design. And then down in the master cabin at the vanity desk there, there's a little stool or a little ottoman they can bring up here. And so, you know, you could fit six people around this dining table. So two dining areas, you've got El Fresco dining up on the flybridge. And then when the weather's bad, dining in here. Outside, you'll notice there's no fixed table in the cockpit. Um, so you can choose, there is an option of a coffee table in the cockpit. Um, but most of our clients have chosen just to um, go for their design as it is, and then they can bring it up their own um, foldable table for, for the cockpit if they need. But generally, your dining is done in those two, two places up on the fly in here. The boat's obviously fully air conditioned um, with compressors in each cabin and here on the flybridge. So the uh, ducting is just up here. And if I want to watch TV? Ah, good question. Um, wait, if you can point out where the TV is. They've hidden it well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I'm not prepared and I didn't don't have a remote control next to me, but uh, <laughs> there is a remote control and this pops out. So you've got a 42 inch TV, which is easy to see from, from in here. Very good. No, I don't know as well. So while we're on this side of the boat, we'll jump down into the um, guest accommodation.
Odin's on this side, two double cabins. Um, you've got great, huge amount of storage here. It goes all the way back. You know, I can't even reach the back of it. And if you were to pick the wine cooler in the from the factory, this is where the wine cooler would, uh, would be situated. Again, great storage here and a hanging locker here. You've got a, a double sized bed here at the um, head end and then it narrows down at the feet. Um, you've got a shared ensuite on this side. Nice hull window and ventilation through a deck hatch at the top along with the port light in the hull window. Nice high ceilings, you feel, feel like a, there's a huge amount of space. And I can see air conditioning controls in every cabin there. Yeah. So Rach, if you go back into the aft cabin, that's a full queen size bed with a, a huge hull window on the side. So this would probably be the VIP. I wouldn't mind spending some time in here. That would be an owner's cabin on most 40 foot boats. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. And then, and then the shared ensuite with separate shower. Lovely camera work, Rachel. So fresh water flush toilets. This, this boat has a standard 40 liter hot water tank with an option of a secondary, um, another 40 liters. So you can choose, so you can have one 40 liters on the port hull for the master and then 40 liters of hot water on the starboard hull here for the guests. Makes a lot of sense. So four easy steps to come back up to the main deck. And then down into the master. These curtains obviously are just for the doorways for privacy. Let's say you're in the marina, you're staying on board at night, wanna watch some TV, you've got blinds around all the windows, manual blinds. And then you've got the rear, rear door curtains. So as an example, today you're on board, you, you haven't got the air conditioning running? No, no. no. And so you're getting ample ventilation just by having those rear doors open and those side windows, you're getting the, the, the breeze through the boat. Yeah, you don't, you don't feel too um, enclosed or you always feel like there's a, there's a breeze through the boat. I mean, if we were to open, there's, there's four deck hatches, either two on each side. Um, if you were to open them, you'd, you know, you'd have plenty of breeze. And then notwithstanding, you can always fit cabin fans. If you're not one to like the generator or the aircon running all night, you can uh, fit cabin fans quite quite easily and subtly and inexpensively. Very good. So Thank down you. here, down you walk down here on the port hull, you enter this little foyer area where the first thing you notice is the switchboard. So this is the main um, control center of the boat. You've got all your bilge pumps battery switches, 12 volt um, um, appliances, battery monitoring system, air conditioning, um, generator and water maker, and AIS. And uh, fire detection just above there, yeah? Ah, uh, yep, well, well spotted. And then before you enter the master cabin, you've got an optional washing machine here. You can also fit a washer dryer. If you choose not to have this, so standard, 
this becomes a, a big locker. So you can imagine the size of a washing machine that becomes a great locker, good place to keep linen, sheets, towels, that kind of thing. And then entering the master cabin. This really is one of those areas on the bow that everybody I bring on board, they just can't believe the size for a 40 foot boat. This is really the size. This is a master cabin you would see on a 55 foot boat, I would say. You've got this beautiful queen size bed facing this huge hole window. A great place to wake up in the morning. So tell me while we're standing there, Marcus, you know, we've, we can see obviously this boat's got an incredible volume um, and very livable. You know, I think anyone looking at it would go, wow, how good would it be to cruise up the Queensland coast or, or cruise uh, further afield around uh, Asia or, or the Pacific? What about its sea keeping uh, abilities? You've obviously done a lot of uh, helming of this model now. It, it, does it handle nicely out at sea? Yeah, it's surprising actually. Um, it's got very fine entry bows with spray rails at the at the front, so it's a very dry boat. And you know, it's got a, a decent bridge clearance, but actually, with this boat, it seems to create a cushion of air. And if you're going over through a swell, it seems seems to create a cushion of air in between the hulls, and it, it, there's uh, virtually no slamming or slapping. Um, and it's just a very well designed boat because it's a, a power boat. It was designed to be a power boat from the ground up. It's not a sailing boat that's been converted or added onto uh, to become a power boat. It's it's a it's a credit to the designers and uh, and in fact the owner of this the owners of this one they're they're soon to head off on a bit of a coastal run down to um, Jervis Bay uh, just south of Sydney and then back up here. And then uh, plan to take it to the Wood Sundays and possibly even further north later this year. So it's a, it's definitely a boat that uh, is a proven coastal runner and very livable for two, you know, up to oh, a small family. This is this is that uh, Ottoman, oh, sorry, stool that I was mentioning before. Sorry, I just had a, a internet issue then. So if I've dropped out, I'm back now, Marcus. Oh, okay. And I'm not sure if you heard anything I said, but <laughs> yeah, no, I think everyone I'm else sure did. did. Everyone else except me. Um, so a really nice ensuite. So there's, you know, it flows in from the accommodation space. You've got a really nice open shower it's behind this solid glass door. Um, and then what is not often seen on um, boats of this size is an enclosed toilet. So boat toilets, boats on suites are normally all in one space. Um, so it's really quite a luxury to have an enclosed toilet with a hatch above for ventilation and mechanical ventilation as well. There's a larger hatch here for, um, um, for ventilation as we spoke before. And then fantastic storage through throughout hanging locker here for the for clothes and then if you go in the rage you just see to the right there's quite a lot of linen space towel beach towels and sorry just while i was offline for a minute then you we were talking about the sea keeping ability and so on that and i heard you mention uh, the design, it's important that people realise that the power boat range or the motor yacht range of Fontaine de Joe is designed by a completely different designer to the uh, sailboat range. Yes, that's right. So this is the smaller, uh, well, this is the mid range size of the Fontaine de Joe motor yacht range. So as you mentioned before in the intro, there's a smaller 37 foot long called MY4S, which is a sports version and um, will appeal for people here on the Gold Coast, even where you've got bridge clearance issues and maybe a, a flybridge 
version is not suitable, you can have this sports version with a nice, cool sun, electric sunroof. Um, has all the benefits of the cab shaft drive engines on that in that version. And then there's the bigger brother of this, or bigger sister, I should say, which is the MY6, which is the 44 foot version of pretty much what we're standing on now. So and a lot of the design um, features are the same. And so if you find that this boat hits all your, ticks all the boxes, but you just need a little bit more space, then check out the MY6. And I think it's okay for us to mention too that at the moment, for those who are in Australia watching this, that the Australian dollar versus the euro is strengthening quite strongly. So it's a good time to uh, to reconsider because uh, yeah. the value of the boats is uh, improving all the time. Okay, so if we come back up to the cockpit. I think we're almost done. Have you got any questions there, Greg? No, but I, I think we might ask. We've got a few people watching today. So if there's anyone that's got a question, now's the time to ask before we uh, uh, sign off. But I, I think you've done a very good detailed walkthrough. Um, there's, it's clearly a, uh, a very impressive model. Yeah, if you can envision, you spend, a, when you're out boating, no matter where you are in the world, you spend a lot of time at anchor. So if you can imagine once you get where you're going, this boat, you know, in a beautiful anchorage, kids swimming off the back. Um, there's lots of different areas on the boat. People can get away, you know, up the front on the flybridge. So you're not all on top of each other. Um, these big, expansive lounging areas. There's really, um, it really does. It is, it is a great package, this size boat for a, for many, um, you know, for many um, uses. And what about noise underway, Marcus? Uh, well, the IPS are very quiet. One thing you notice on a lot of boats, well, actually in the um, starboard aft cabin, we noticed the master bed, I mean, not the master bed, but the bed was right next to the aft bulkhead. And then you've got the engine room. That's very typical, a lot of, monohull boats, where on this one, the, the master bed is actually further forward. So you've got quite a big expanse area between that and the engine room. So if you're running at nighttime and somebody's trying to sleep in the master cabin, it's you know it's really quite nice and quiet in there. And I, you probably didn't notice, but there's huge, great and, insulation on all the engine rooms. And that would also mean that if you're up in, in bed in the master cabin, there'd be virtually no way of hearing the gen set, right? Yeah, because you've got that foyer area that we saw with the washing machine, and then you've got another space, you know, another void, and then you've got the bed. So the uh, the harm of the uh, the generator, which is already in its soundproof box, would be uh, minimal. So these are the this is the insulation I was talking about. So all through the engine room. So noise wise, is you wouldn't it's not a concern at all. All right, and then. Um... So you're there on the Gold Coast, so it's a catamaran. Um, if you want to maintain the boat, if you want to haul it out, as an example, there you've got travel lifts or, or lifts that can easily cope with the, the beam of this, this power boat. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Well, if you imagine this is a 5.96. Yeah. 5.96, so that's the size of like a 60 foot beam monohull. So that's typical of a lot of marinas around here. They, they, they're already set up to lift boats of that beam. I mean, here are the bow works. You can lift, um, we can lift up to an 80 foot catamaran with like a nine meter beam. So in this particular area, there's no issues. And all along the coasts of Australia and Asia Pacific, the boat of this size, even the big brother, um, the MY6, uh, that, that wouldn't be a problem. Very good. All right, well, I think you've done a really good job. Maybe what we might do is if the weather's okay, is just step off again from the um, from the port side, away from all the fenders, just so we can have a look at the profile of the boat from the dock. Uh, yeah, and then a few, we might, maybe if you walk up. Just maybe go up the ramp, Rachel, the profile. A, a better look at the overall um, product. She, she's got a really quite cool, sleek, 
a sexy um, design, I think. Yeah, they look what they look fantastic when they're motoring along. Yeah, and at anchor, they, they ride very flat too. So when you're cruising at 19, 18, 18, 19, 20 knots, it's very flat. Everybody can move around on some monohulls. Um, you'll find that they're you know they're very bow up. Not the case with these uh, power cats. Yeah, so no, you know everyone good. you know. You can be making lunch or cooking in the cooking up some pasta in the kitchen as we're on while you're on, on the way. And this one obviously has the uh, hull coloring, which is an option. So standard, that's the, the the hull would just be white. Yes. Um, you still have those black windows, of course, but you can see um, the, the, it's like a, a dark gray this particular color so um, there's there's actually about 30 or 40 different colors that you can choose from and just uh checking my statistics there so we draw around about just over one meter yeah so it's not a very deep one point draw. yeah 1.2 i believe yeah 1.12 yeah so oh well, that's fantastic so listen uh, i'm just going to stop the share screen for a minute Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, no, I'm going to bring my camera back in. That's what I'm going to do. Um, start my camera. There we go. And I'm just going to do a share screen and bring back the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so at the moment, we've answered all our questions for today, Marcus. So I'm happy uh, if you guys are, we'll, uh, we'll sign off on the, on today's presentation. I'll just stop the share there. Uh, thank you both. Very good, very informative. And every time I, every time we do these walkthroughs or, or viewings of the MY5, uh, it impresses more and more each time. So uh, uh, very good. And, and obviously, once again, thank you to the owners of, to, of the vessel today for allowing us to, um, to uh, allowing Mark the walkthrough and presentation. So on that note, we will uh, end today's presentation and uh, we'll see everyone in one, one, one month's time to uh, do some discussing about cruising in the uh, Mediterranean. So anyway, thank you. And we're signing off for today.